Hi, I'm David Stevenson. Someday our cars will drive themselves. Someday we'll be healthier. Physical objects will no longer be dumb. They'll have built-in computer chips that will allow them to be automatically regulated. And we'll have a network of networks where information will flow automatically throughout the whole system. That day is coming soon and it's brought to you by the Internet of Things. problem with the Internet of Things is nobody's heard about it. Have you heard about it? Didn't think so. About four years ago, we reached a milestone when for the first time there were more things, smartphones, monitors in the home, assembly line sensors, things of that sort, connected by the Internet, more of those than there were people connected by the Internet. Believe it or not, IBM has actually predicted that by just by 2015, there'll be one trillion, one trillion things connected via the internet. Isn't that incredible? So what's that going to mean to us? Our homes will be automated. Companies are going to be able to operate more efficiently. Transportation will be radically affected as well. Now I don't want to bore you with a long lecture about technology, but there are a couple of key points to keep in mind about the internet of things. First of all, everything from cows to your household refrigerator, smartphones, to uh, parts of an industrial assembly line will have its own unique address, typically an internet protocol address, which will allow each one of those things to address any other unique address. That's going to allow uh, each of those um, things to communicate with all the other things via the internet, and they'll be able to do it without any human intervention. It's going to be a network of networks. So for example, the information about energy use is going to communicate with the information about uh, the environment, um, with the information about your home, and the information about um, uh, transportation and the uh, corporation. And all of those networks of networks will become integrated. I have a sneaking suspicion this is still probably too abstract for most people to understand. So here is a wide variety of Internet of Things devices that are already in existence, already being used, already changing people's lives, and that uh, hopefully will make this uh, abstract concept a lot more concrete. I've heard that little beep in the background. This is a um, special kind of um, prescription bottle cap that uh, alerts you when it's time to take your prescription. Now, why do that? Turns out, that only 55% of people taking uh, prescriptions, particularly people on um, long-term prescription drug uh, coverage, uh, actually take their prescriptions on time. And that turns out to be a huge problem. In fact, studies have shown that it's about a $300 billion a year problem of um, unnecessary hospitalizations, unnecessary uh, operations, and a whole variety of other costs. It's eliminated. Uh, to a great extent by this simple bottle cap. You'll notice that the top is, while it's a regular bottle cap on the bottom, the top is a little bit larger. That's because it includes a remote transmitter. And um, about a half an hour before you're supposed to start taking the drug, oh, there's, there goes my signal, it starts to uh, beep and uh, lets you know that it's time to take the uh, drug. And um, here's the really cool part. Uh, it, it keeps on um, glowing until you actually take it. And when you do take it, it sends a signal to the company's servers. And at the end of the month, your doctor and you actually get a printout showing how uh, frequently you really did take the drug on time. And it's turned out that um, the, the little glowing light that goes on here is a tremendously important um, uh, motivating device so that instead of that 55% of people who actually take their drugs on time, it goes up to 85%. And that's a, a huge uh, deduction from that uh, $300 billion a year uh, waste of, of untaken drugs. So that's um, the glow cap. It's probably the most important one of them all. It's called the Arduino board. It's a microcontroller board that comes from Italy it was developed originally for students at a design school who were not uh, computer uh, uh, liber literate particularly. Um, allows them to fool around with all sorts of controlling all sorts of devices through this little board. 
And it's been adopted by a global community of hackers, designers, artists, and others, and actually is starting to spin out um, a number of uh, commercial products as well. And some of the things that have been done with the uh, Arduino board include um, uh, intrusion alarms, um, the thermostats, and a whole house uh, climate conditioning uh, boards. And uh, it's um, simple and yet uh, incredibly versatile. And it's very important to note that it's what's called open source. That means that anybody is allowed to, the, uh, the plans for the um, Arduino board are posted on the internet. Anybody is able to copy them and improve on them as long as they share it. And that's this concept of, of sharing is a terribly important aspect of the Internet of Things. Here's another Internet of Things application for uh, transportation that I particularly like because it shows that everything isn't um, just uh, totally hunky-dory with the Internet of Things. There are some real trade-offs involved. This is the snapshot from um, Progressive Insurance. You plug it into the little diagnostic port on your car, and uh, as you drive, it uh, automatically records and automatically transfers that information from your car to Progressive Insurance about how many miles you drive, uh, whether you make a lot of uh, sharp stops, uh, the time of day you drive, and uh, the total distances. And um, based on that information, after about 30 days, Progressive uh, uses an algorithm to analyze all the results. And um, if you uh, come in at um, a composite figure that is less than the, um, uh, what the average driver has, uh, you can actually get a 30% discount on your insurance. Well, that's all well and good. But the nagging doubt that's in the back of a lot of people's minds, and the reason why um, more people don't do this, is people are wondering, oh, do I really want Progressive to know exactly how much I've been driving? Do, they, do I want them to know um, uh, how much, uh, many uh, sudden stops I've been making? They say that it can't increase your insurance, but um, there are a lot of nagging concerns about that. So that illustrates that um, there are significant privacy and uh, also security concerns about the Internet of Things. And here's another one that uh, I just absolutely love. This is one that's um, in pre-production at this point. This is Jerry the Bear. Jerry happens to be a teddy bear who, with a very specific audience in mind. That's kids three to seven years old who, take, who are diabetic and have to take insulin. And when you think about it, those poor kids are pincushions who often don't know anything about what's happening to them. Well, this sort of turns the tables. Jerry is their bear, and they take care of him, and they take care of his diabetes um, treatment um, by um, using this little monitor and a variety of uh, devices that, that come with Jerry. And um, they can actually... <laughs> They can monitor and find out what his blood glucose levels are, and um, they can administer fake insulin. Uh, they can give him snacks, and um, it's turned out that uh, doctors love it because it really empowers the kids and helps them for the first time to really understand what, um, uh, is, what it is to go through diabetic treatment. And uh, so that's Jerry the Bear. Business and industry are also starting to benefit from the Internet of Things as well. This is a, a sub-metering um, sensor for a building uh, that allows you to have much more um, sophisticated information about uh, energy use than was ever possible with the main meter for the building. It's part of what's called the smart building movement, which builds in sensors throughout um, a building, uh, the windows, um, the individual rooms and allows, on one hand, uh, you to optimize um, the energy use and at the same time to reduce environmental impacts of that. And the same kind of thing is happening on assembly lines as well, where instead of uh, plain old valves and meters um, that uh, required humans to go and uh, monitor them, they now have built-in monitors and sensors that relay information on a real-time basis to the assembly line uh, control room so that for the first time ever the people in control of the assembly line are able to uh, fine-tune 
assembly to a way, to an extent that they were never able to do before. I mentioned um, with conjunction with this snapshot that um, not everything is all uh, bread and roses with um, the Internet of Things, and there are some really some significant problems we face. Uh, one, from a national standpoint, is that um, there's a very real chance that the United States may end up as a uh, also ran in the uh, commercialization of the Internet of Things. That's because China has made it much more of a priority than our government has. Um, they're doing research in 11 different areas of the Internet, whereas to, if, to be charitable, um, our government is doing research in maybe two of those 11 areas. And um, they are building in sensors into bridges. They're um, uh, building smart cities all over the place. And every place they do it, they're including sensors. They're doing it in their new factories as well. And uh, last year, the uh, total output of the Internet of Things industry in China was equivalent to $4.12 billion dollar, U.S. dollars. Um, and uh, the Chinese uh, prime minister mentions the Internet of Things whenever he uh, has a chance, whereas opposed to that, uh, President uh, Obama has never mentioned it once, if you can imagine. There are also some technical uh, I issues that have to be uh, um, dealt with as well. One of those is uh, the, um, as I mentioned, uh, each item on the uh, Internet of Things will have its own unique address. And we were running out of Internet addresses with the old IPv4 system. So fortunately, um, the powers that be have come up with a new system, IPv6, which you don't really need to understand. But uh, all you need to know is that that will allow as many new Internet address uh, addresses as if uh, memory serves, uh, there are grains of sand on all the beaches uh, throughout the world. So we're not going to run out of uh, those internet addresses uh, anytime soon either. Security is also an issue. It's uh, great to think about uh, being able to um, drive down our roads in five or ten years with uh, no traffic jams and uh, all of the cars sensing each other and uh, adjusting their speed uh, accordingly. But what would happen if a hacker or, uh, God forbid, some uh, foreign government uh, were to uh, be able to hack into that system and uh, suddenly all the computers go dead and the cars are um, all in the most uh, colossal pileup you've ever imagined. That's why um, I think that uh, we really need to take cybersecurity much more uh, uh, seriously than we ever have before. And we need a real coalition of government and business in order to um, uh, make cybersecurity a much bigger priority uh, in order to deal with this. So hopefully, uh, I've convinced you now that uh, the Internet of Things is happening and that it's going to benefit your life. But um, what can you do now to start um, uh, capitalizing on it before um, it's uh, a widespread reality to speed your adoption of it and start realizing those benefits uh, more rapidly? If you're a company, the time has come to break down old barriers between um, uh, information silos within the company uh, where uh, only part of your uh, workforce has information, uh, access to information at one time. And instead, um, making uh, the possibility of real-time sharing of information a possibility. That's going to require major changes in management style for a lot of companies. But believe me, the benefits are tremendous of doing that because you're going to be able to have collaborative decision making. You're going to be able to have all of the players who need to know that information on a real-time basis, say, for example, uh, dealing with an assembly line. Everybody will have access to that information um, on a shared real-time basis, and that's going to improve efficiency, but only if we break down the old barriers. So. Um, we need to uh, start uh, changing management styles. If you're an individual, you can buy one of the Arduino boards and um, start uh, playing around with it. Uh, and, uh, uh, or you can uh, get uh, the uh, snapshot from um, uh, Progressive Insurance and uh, maybe start saving on your uh, uh, car insurance as a result of um, the Internet of Things. So there is a wide range of things that you can do right now, or, or you even start buying appliances uh, like the Nest uh, thermostat 
that uh, have Internet of Things capabilities built in. But, so the Internet of Things, in conclusion, is a um, reality today. It's only going to get bigger and more complex, and it's going to benefit our lives in every way possible. And I hope that uh, this uh, presentation has convinced you that um, it's important for you to start monitoring the Internet of Things and uh, that uh, you become involved in shaping this wonderful future. Thank you very much. Production support provided by Medfield.tv. Access to our community.